find Carrie Peach. Mm. So he had done for his DPhil a thesis on West Indian migration to Britain. Um, he took a very different approach from that which I wanted to to take and subsequently did take. In that he based his work on the um, just data on immigration data. He later went on to, to work on census data looking at the distribution of different ethnic groups including Caribbean ethnic groups in major cities and the way these shifted. But at that time he was looking at the immigration data and at that time migration studies was focusing on was it the pushes or was it the pulls and he his thesis was that it was the pulls, was the economic pulls in Britain. <clears throat> and he was his argument was conflict was contending that the people who had worked on the pushes, which had been of other scholars, um, were had not understood the the dynamic that was raised really the pulls. Well I I felt that it was not either so simple either way mm -hmm. and that there was a whole um, dynamic set up and from the people in the Caribbean they didn't even know the details of the the economic opportunities to which they were were going um, so that I, I felt there was a sort of another layer of explanation based on the information that was coming through to people in the Caribbean and people on the ground in the Caribbean, not just at the official level. And um, and the kind of, the way in which that fed into the already existing culture of migration among people in Jamaica. And then there were other factors that contributed to um, the point at which people made the decision to go, to migrate, rather than just build the build up of the propensity to migrate. So I was anxious to see how the propensity for migration and the migration culture and the way in which institutions family institutions, land tenure and all that accommodated migration and had done for already for a generation or more when people were going to Central America and Cuba. And how this then would be precipitated into uh, actual migration based on fairly pragmatic factors and immigration policies at the destination. You know, so for example, when people got wind of the fact that immigration controls in, were going to be implemented in 19, which they were ultimately in 1962, mm. in Britain, people got the wind of the fact this was going, you know, the immigration could, could be curtailed. And so there's a great rush before that. It really had nothing to do with the economic climate. It was the information that was coming through. So I, I, so I sort of moved on from what he had been working on to look at uh, a more nuanced set of um, decision making and the behaviors associated with, with both the culture of migration and then the opportunities as perceived the perceptions of the opportunities and in, based on the information. So it's like a con, it counteracted the it's sort of classical economic idea of of um, people moving to the better conditions. It was really people moving to the information about mm. those conditions based also on an existing assumption that life was better in England in the mother country and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you see that shifted later on mm -hmm. 
And so I saw so that, that to, so to um, where people said, well, the mother country has turned their back, her back mm -hmm. on us now, so it's America that the opportunity is lying, etc. Um, one of the things you talk about, the importance of location. Could you explain what you meant by Yes, that? so by that I meant partly, as I said, the difference between Jamaica, Barbados and St. Vincent and the Grandees, mm. but also even within those islands, such as Jamaica in particular, but also in the others, location in the urban centres versus some smaller centres versus very rural the differences in the perception of migration and of the other countries, mm -hmm. such as America, US, Canada, Britain in particular at the time, um, differed so greatly, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that people's perceived worlds mm -hmm. <laughs> were very distinctive based on their location. Yeah. But yeah. Yes. So that would be town, country, and then island, island. And even within country, yeah. country and country. In other words, <laughs> small town versus rural and very rural. Yeah. Yeah, cause I stratified ah. each island into different kinds of areas. Oh, I see. Mm. And there's also, um, you have this later, slightly later, piece called Off the Island, which is about white collar migration. So that's an example of our class, social class. Mm -hmm. that's yeah, that's thing. another thing. Yeah, well, again, there was a tendency in some of the early literature on migration to see migration as a homogeneous thing, as everybody moved for similar reasons in similar ways. And in fact, it's, it's quite um, varied according to class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, partly because of the information that one, you know, different class groups have access to. And partly because, it, well, then it develops a different image, different understanding, different perception of the um, options. Mm -hmm. So that one, yes, was on white-collar migration, mm -hmm. yeah.